There is one really big problem with the Z Fold 2 that we gotta talk about. My name is Jacqueline and welcome to my Z Fold 2 review. When I received the Fold 2 box and opened it, I was surprised. The box looks really nice, but it's definitely a lot less extravagant than last year's box and it comes with pretty bare bone accessories unlike the Fold 1, which I kind of feel like was trying to sell you on the experience of a foldable. And now I feel like Samsung is a bit more confident and they're hoping that the phone speaks for itself, plus one unforeseen perk that I'll mention at the end of the video. But I popped it out of the box and I folded it and yeah, it's still pretty incredible. And that excitement does not go away. Every time I unfold this phone to read an article or watch a video, or go in Notion like a productivity guru. I am excited and inspired by the design and it feels super practical. It truly feels like I'm holding a piece of the future in my hand when I'm holding this phone. And I am. But here's the thing about the future. It's not here yet. And that means in this present moment, this phone is facing a multitude of issues. And we're gonna get to them. The build is a much more mature version of the Fold 1. The hinge can stop in a plethora of places, it's better calibrated to avoid a dust invasion, and the cover screen is nearly edge to edge. So right off the bat, that addresses many of the main issues that I had with Fold version number one. And the cover display is beautiful. It's bright and very colorful. And as we all know, Samsung likes to really amp up the saturation and they've done it again, but it kind of paid off. The display looks really gorgeous as most Samsung displays do. But there is something to note with the display and it's the bizarre aspect ratio. So I doubt in your first video on the Fold 2, you've probably heard other people say that it's a very tall aspect ratio and it is. And that means for applications that require a ton of scrolling like Twitter, it may be really nice, but for other applications, you will run into some issues. For example, watching YouTube videos full screen is like comically unusable because you have to zoom in so much if you want to fill the display. And even typing a tweet or responding to an email or something is kind of difficult because the keyboard is so narrow. It's doable, but I have like very average sized hands and even I struggle. So I can imagine people with bigger hands will definitely struggle. When closed, there still is that triangle shape. So that actually means that the cover display is not perfectly straight, but I haven't really found that to be an issue or something that I know I can just like see it when I'm looking at it. And the hinge is again substantial. The entire phone is. It's thick, it's heavy, it's very noticeable in the pocket. It's very significant. And I definitely still worry about dirt, grime, or dust getting into the hinge, but I worry a lot less than I did last year. And that's mainly because there has been a pretty significant redesign that has improved my confidence. Samsung brought over a lot of the tech that worked on the Z Flip, including flex mode, which is great. And I use it a ton in supported applications. And I'll dive in and show you a couple of those examples when we hop into software. Speaking of diving, it'd be awesome if you dive down right now to the subscribe button and hit it and turn on the bell. That was like an absolutely horrible transition very much a stretch. And stretching is something that I'm doing a lot on the Fold 2. Did I redeem myself? Maybe a little. Uh, with one-handed use, this phone is, it's tough. So the actual display is super large. So hitting all the corners of it is really hard. I feel like you have to do like hand gymnastics, but even opening and closing it is really hard. So if I have it open and I'm using it with one hand, I'm normally holding it like this. So in order to close it, I kind of have to maneuver my hand to the bottom of the device, hoping that it doesn't fall out and then push it closed. So when I'm doing that, I'm always worried that the phone is gonna drop. So it's not the easiest thing in the world. It's doable and it got easier over time. However, opening really hasn't, it's very difficult. So when it's one-handed and I'm trying to pop it open, I kind of have to dig my hand into the side of the phone, hoping that I don't accidentally nail, like literally nail the display as I'm popping it open because this phone still comes with the same care instructions that the regular Fold had. So although we get some improved technology, it's still not like a durable flagship and it has a pre-installed screen protector on it that Samsung recommends like not taking off, but I'm still just super worried about accidentally digging my nail into it when I open up the phone. That said, that's not the problem I have with this phone. Let's close the loop on the build though. I have some great news for you that I feel like is getting totally undercovered. This phone has incredible speakers, like so, so, so good. I cannot overstate it. For listening to music or audio, it's just, it's so good. The Pixel 4a because it does have a pretty good camera. All right, let's do it. Let me know what you think of those speakers in the comments below. I was incredibly impressed with them. I think that they're my favorite smartphone speakers in the recent months that I've been testing phones. Like they're really great. The power button and the volume rocker, not as great though. Um, you've probably heard me say this before if you watched another one of my reviews. I much prefer when the volume rocker is on the left side and the power button's on the right. Don't like them both on the same side. So the Samsung's already not starting that strong there. And then the power button is also indented. So it's a little bit harder to find. And it has a fingerprint reader in the power button which feels like in concept, it'd be amazing, 
but for some reason I'm having a ton of issues with the fingerprint reader reading my finger like I've set up my finger multiple times and with my thumb I get maybe like a 60 to 70 percent accuracy but with my index finger I'm getting maybe like 20 to 40 percent like it's really not great and I have to do it multiple times to get it to work often however that is not the problem I have with this phone all right let's move on to the inner display and software because there are so many things to be said here so I don't know if you remember, but when the first foldable came out at CES, the software was atrocious. Like everything lagged, there was a lot of latency and just like, it wasn't great. The software on this Fold 2 is pretty great. It's super intuitive and smooth and it does what I'm expecting it to do a lot of the time. If I have an app open on the cover display and I unfold it, it will immediately bring me to the same place on the main display. And the inverse is also true. You can actually set that up in the software so I can have something open on the main display, fold it and have it stay open on the cover display most of the time. And I say most of the time because this is completely contingent on developer support for this. So with Samsung applications, it works. And with other applications like Twitter, it also works. But there are other applications that just don't work. Instagram is a perfect example. Instagram never is well optimized on devices that aren't a priority to them. And the Fold 2 right now isn't a priority to them. So uh, not only does it look really bad on the main display because of the unconventional aspect ratio, but if I close the display and I try to open it on the cover screen, it actually has to restart the application because it's not optimized. So with Samsung applications and applications that are optimized, my feedback is exceptionally positive. It works really well but there are a ton of other applications that aren't optimized and we kind of have to just cross our fingers and hope that they will be. And I told you we'd come back to flex mode, so let's come back to flex mode. It's great. So for apps that are optimized, they're able to communicate with the hardware to format differently when the device is bent. I found this most useful in the camera app for two main things. First thing is that I can fold the phone and then kind of use the bottom of it as a makeshift tripod and then adjust this part to get a different camera angle. That's awesome. And then the second use in the camera app is actually going through my photos. The bottom part of the fold actually will become like a trackpad and you can swipe through and zoom in. So you don't have to obstruct the image like you normally would on a normal phone. You can see like the full image up top and then use the bottom and it works incredibly well. So that's a feature that I didn't expect to use a ton, but I did actually use it a ton. The selfie mode is just another area where Samsung impressed me. Uh, they're definitely utilizing the hardware, which is great. And the main display acts as an incredible viewfinder. So if you're a photo or video enthusiast, you'll love this. Or maybe you're just the dad at the concert that obstructs everyone else's view. You're also gonna love this. I'm super impressed with the implementation with the camera. And the camera is pretty great too. It's not as good as like the Note 20 Ultra. Obviously the Note 20 Ultra has a lot more features like 8K video or extensive zoom. But for the most part, the Fold 2 still takes pretty incredible images. I'm super impressed with it and I think you will be as well. It's not like the best camera on the market, but it's pretty solid and it can definitely stack up to other flagships. So aside from being an incredible viewfinder, the display is just great overall. It's an 120 hertz, 7.6 inch display, and it's stunning. It's really smooth paired with the high-end specs, and I just love doing things on this display. The crease is definitely still there, and you can definitely see it and feel it, but after a while last year, it didn't really bother me, and it's kind of the same thing again this year. Again, I would love it not to be here, but it's not the end of the world that it is here, and it doesn't take away from the fact that the display is super bright and colorful. I love watching videos on here, reading on here, replying to emails on here. There's so much that you can do with the big screen. My only real complaint with it, aside from the crease, is just the bizarre aspect ratio, and I feel like when you have a device like this, you're going to be consuming a lot of media. That's like one of the main reasons why you'd buy it. So it's a little disappointing that the aspect ratio isn't really meant for that and you do get like pretty significant black bars. That however is not my problem with the Fold 2. Let's hit battery and then I'm gonna tell you what my problem is. So the battery is a 4,500 million power battery and it's great. I never really worry about running down this phone and if I'm ever running low, I can literally just use the cover display instead of the main one and save significantly on battery because the display is 60 Hertz and a lot less power consuming. But most of the time I don't need to do that. I can use the phone how I wanna use it and then just plug it in at night and it's good to go. So that's also great. All right, finally, the moment you've probably been waiting for, the problem with this phone. We said that the problem isn't the odd narrow cover screen or the lack of water resistance or the unreliable fingerprint sensor. Individually, those things that I just mentioned wouldn't be deal breakers, but when you combine them with the fact that this phone also has a general lack of app support and the price tag is nearly two grand, the problem starts to come into focus. This is an incredibly impressive device, and in my opinion, Samsung is the most innovative brand in the United States right now. They're willing to take risks and pioneer new tech, but that's exactly what this is, new tech. You get to hold a piece of the future in your hand, but in the present moment, that comes with a lot of compromises. The technology isn't durable enough, there aren't enough developers backing this product to make software incredible no matter which application you use, 
and the price is still just too expensive. I want to be able to recommend a phone that does exactly this without durability or usability concerns. And this is the closest we've come, but it's still not there yet. I think that Samsung might actually get there first with the Z Flip since there are less things to consider. And I just made a video on that if you want to check it out right here. But I'm so impressed with the Fold 2 and I think that there are a market of people that should buy this and will love it. But I just don't think that the general person should buy this phone yet. Maybe next year. Samsung did an incredible job overall, but it's still very much a future piece of tech. Thank you guys all so much for watching and for your time. I really appreciate you. I had so much fun filming this video and hanging out with this phone. And I hope that you enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.